and granted us righteous Abraham was in a situation where only God and only his faith in God could save him. And that's the same position that you and I are in. The principle of faith alone is experienced by us not only for the same purpose, but also by the same process. Paul said it was for us also. Notice the second part of verse 24. It will be credited to us who believe in Him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. Now do you see that the patriarch Abraham was faced with that great dilemma of how does death become transformed into life? Yet Abraham simply believed God. Now we're faced with that same great dilemma and that we must believe that God raised Christ from the dead. Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Now in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 32, it tells of Paul preaching this doctrine that God raises, He raised Christ from the dead. And he preached this doctrine at Athens, the cultural and intellectual capital of the world. And where he, here, he was utterly ridiculed for this, this doctrine, for teaching that Christ was resurrected from the dead. And in our day, in our age, there are countless who refuse to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected. But this is the very heart of the faith. Now according to Romans 10 verse 9, Paul speaks of the sinner believing Christ was resurrected and that God gave credits to us the righteousness of Christ. So you believe that God the Father raised His Son from the dead and then His Son's righteousness is credited to your account. We talked about that extensively last week. That we have sin in our account. We're all sinners before the Lord. And God takes that sin and places it upon Christ. And He takes Christ's righteousness as He kept all of God's work perfect. And He places that righteousness within us. And that's what the Father sees when He looks at us. No longer is there condemnation against us. God has credited His Son's righteousness to us. Now finally, salvation is made good to us on the same principle. The same principle that was given to Abraham. The Old Testament means of salvation was the same as the New Testament means of salvation was based on the same principle of faith. Look at verse 25. It says, He was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. There's that word justification again. Just, justified, justification. Let me explain that again quickly. Some may not completely understand that word. You've got to picture God as the great judge that He is. And He looks down, He looks down at Paul Paul, and He says, You are declared right before me. You are my child. I am justifying you. No longer is condemnation going to fall upon you. And that is what justification means. So Paul says that the Lord Jesus was delivered up for our trespasses. He died for our sins. And then He was raised up for our justification to declare us righteous before God. So Abraham was saved the same way that we are because he looked forward by faith to the finished work of Christ. In John chapter 8, verse 56, Jesus said to the unbelieving Jew of his day, Your father Abraham was overjoyed that he would see my day. He saw it and rejoiced. We look back by faith to the finished work of Christ as Abraham looked forward by faith to the finished work of Christ and we enjoy that same salvation that Abraham enjoyed. So we have now compared and contrasted salvation by works and salvation by faith. The conclusion that Abraham came to, the conclusion that David, the conclusion that Paul came to was that salvation is by faith and faith alone. If you're to experience true, transforming, saving faith, you must come to the same conclusion in your life. Now there was a rabbi in the third, third century who noted that Moses gave us 365 prohibitions and 248 positive commands. That's a lot. David in Psalm 15 reduced them to 11. Isaiah in 33, 14, and 15 made them into 6. Micah 6, 8, binds them into three, and Habakkuk reduced them all into one, namely, the just shall live by faith. The justified, those that are declared right before God, will live by faith. 
Now, as we talked about this verse for the last three weeks, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 10, it talks about grace, it talks about faith, and then it says, this is not your own, that God placed them there. So God places that faith in our life, and He maintains it just like He maintains our justification. We can't maintain our salvation. If you think you can, then you've added works to Christ's finished work. It is all to Christ, or it is none of Christ in your life. Salvation is all of Christ. Now let's talk about what faith might manifest itself as. Someone who truly is justified, someone who's truly saved, born again, and they're a Christian when they die, they're going to be with the Lord. That kind of person, what does living by faith look like in a life? Now there, it should, work should come out of our lives. And if you go on in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 10, it talks about that we're prepared ahead of time for good works. So good works are placed in our life. They should be an outgrowth of true salvation in the life of a believer. So what does that look like, living by faith? Well, it looks like what you're doing this morning. You gather together to honor the Lord. Those that love the Lord understand what the Lord called and they obey Him. And the Lord said, we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. That's what the Word of God said. You're doing that this morning. You're assembling together to hear God's Word because you love God, you love the brotherhood, and the brethren, and you're coming together to worship the Lord. Now what else does it look like? It looks like this right here. Being used. Not just sitting on our shelves at home, but day in and day out when we have the opportunity. We should have the opportunity every day. We pretty much have the opportunity to turn on our TV every day. We have that opportunity. We have the opportunity to open God's Word. We should be in God's Word, studying it daily. And it should look like people in prayer, constantly in prayer. Not prayers in between American Idol, uh, in between each section of American Idol, between commercials. It should be real prayer. When you get along with the Lord and you speak to God, and you speak and you speak and you speak and you listen and you listen and you listen. To the Lord speak to you. It should look like that. And then it also should look like service. You're serving God, but normally the way we serve God is by serving others. Do you love the people around us? Do we love them? Now, I've made this statement before and I'll make it again. That God places here, places in me, and places in Nebraska, places in this area. If we are above God, and if we are honoring God in our lives, if we love God and we love those around us, because the Bible says if you don't love those around you, you don't love God. That's simple. Simple as that. If you don't love those around you, you don't love uh, people, you don't love God. That's as simple as that. So if God placed us here, then our job is here. And if you feel like you no longer can reach people here, then you need to move. That's, that's as simple as that. You need to move. If, if there's nobody else to reach here, there's no other work to be done here, then we need to go somewhere else. But I think there's a lot of work to be done here. And in the rest, in this area, Kansas and all of the folks, there's a lot of work to be done here. There are a ton of lost people. I would say most of the worst. You see that the Bible is clear. Few there that find the kingdom of heaven. There are many that are headed down the path of hell. We've got to reach the people. And we've got to show them the love of God in our lives and reach them for, for the cause of Christ. That's what we're here for. We're here to do that. And again, if you're living by faith, just to live by faith, the fruit of the Spirit will show you the life. The Holy Spirit's in your life. That fruit should show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, what Paul wrote in Galatians. That should be displayed in our lives day in and day out. That's what a person living by faith loves like. Let that be our lives. I hope and pray that that's the desire of your heart to know Christ and to live for Him, to have a right relationship with Him, to honor Him in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these other things that we need and that, that, that some wants some will be added unto us. Let's seek first the kingdom of God.